Africa's intellectual culture goes back a very long way into antiquity. We can find meaningful traces of it as far back as 10,000 BC, over 12,000 years ago. Across these many millennia, Africa's intellectual culture has expressed itself in forms varying from oral delivery to written and graphic signs. Oral traditions were the earliest form of cultural expression. The form is durable. It continues to this day to coexist with new forms as they evolve. Oral traditions emerged alongside the organization of complex social systems beginning in the river valleys of East, South, West and North Africa. The most creative of the earliest oral traditions developed in the Nile Valley they took the original form of myths. African myths constitute a social art form, the earliest form of literature. Now, literature has evolved greatly over these many millennia. To account for major changes in the development of literary art forms, let's examine briefly the ways in which myths as literature differ from epics, for instance, or from expository historical narrative or from fictional narrative. Normally, at the center of a modern novel or a modern historical narrative stands a mortal human individual. He or she is born on a specific date, undergoes specific experiences, and dies at a specific time. The life cycle of a mortal human, starting at birth and ending in death, gives the narrative its form, its shape. A feudal narrative of the heroic type differs from this pattern. The epic is centered on a human being, but that being is not a normal human. He's a hero, that's to say, an extraordinary being charged with a duty and a privilege to fulfill an extraordinary destiny. Often, this character is so special that the epic narrative makes him slightly more than merely human. Epic heroes tend to be part human, part divine. Ancient mythology uses an older 